Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the Little Craft Room podcast. I'm Nicola, I am the owner of a Little Craft Room. We also have a guest here today. Um, so this is Sam, this is my boyfriend and what he is doing here, um, I will explain in a second. Um, so because of the way that this podcast is going to go, I'm not going to do the usual kind of what I'm wearing, what I've done, what I've finished. Um, we are just going to have like one kind of main theme for this, but before we do start um i just want to um just talk about this again um so this is the granny square project that um some of my students um would like um to donate some blankets for the animal shelters and the charities in our area and um we're a little low on numbers this year so i am accepting any donations of granny squares um to the address uh, in the corner um four inch square but apart from that i've got no real preferences as to colour. I mean, acrylic would probably be best in terms of yarn um, structure, but that's just because it's so much easier to, to look after. Um, but yeah, four inch granny squares. I've, I've had a few actually already, so thank you very, very much to um, the people that have already donated. I am immensely grateful. Um, but yeah, we're still accepting donations. So any granny square donations, please send to um, the address in the corner. And that is a UK address as well. So, um, Sam is here because he has volunteered to learn to crochet live on Twitch. Yes, I have. <laughs> so, um, this this stream, uh, for all the crafters who have tried to talk to their partners about it, um, this, this stream is, uh, I don't know, it's not really forced, is it? No, it's like, it, it, it's something that I, I said I, I, you know, I wanted to try at some point because over the last, like, you know, five or so years or basically just across the, the sort of the length of our relationship <clears throat> i've been trying to encourage myself to try new things anyway so you know it kind of makes sense that you know at least one of the hobbies that you have should be one of the things i try in fact i, I did try um uh bungee uh, yes at, you did at your you did. Center. yeah so I, I tried that that was really fun that was really fun <laughs> um, and uh, that, that was really good um and uh yeah i think you know, since you do a lot of uh, crochet and knitting uh, I think it makes sense for me to try at least one of them. So, well. and you have actually, um, you've learned a lot actually since I started. I'll find myself explaining something to you, and you'd be like, "Oh, like this." And I'm like pleasantly surprised. I'm like, "Yeah, exactly like that." Yeah. Um, I, so I, I know what a magic circle is. I know what a skein is. Uh, I, uh, I, I know that you have like different sort of you know, like size hooks for different sort of gauges of yarn and. Uh, I, I know what that does. <laughs> they can't see that on camera. That's my yarn <coughs> swift. <laughs> um, oh, we're probably also likely to be joined at some point um, by our darling Penny. Um, so she is our gorgeous dog. Um, we have I have actually had requests before um, for a dog appearance. Um, because we are both up here, it's highly likely that at some point she will pop in and see what we're up to because she's downstairs at the minute. But she doesn't always kind of like to be on her own. So there is a very high chance that she will bound up the stairs. She's not quiet about it either, so we, we will notice. <laughs> it's weird because um, like it, uh, when we're doing our own thing, like if, if I'm playing games in, in the studio and you're in here doing your stream or you're uh, watching something while crocheting or something, like she's not really all that bothered, is she? She'll no. stay downstairs, but if we're together, then I, I, I guess she feels like she's missing out. Like she's left out, yeah. yeah. She wants to be with us all the time. Wants, she wants to be involved at that point. Same, same thing, she does this adorable thing. I don't think she's mentioned it on stream. No, I haven't. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, if we are hugging while standing up, like yeah, if we're sat on the sofa and we're cuddling, whatever, then she, does, she doesn't care. But if, um, if she sees that we're standing up and we're hugging, she pushes herself in between it's us. It's so cute. She um, kind of joins in. She, she, she wants to be part of the It's the sweetest hug. thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in terms of uh, crochet, I'm going to start off, um, when I'm teaching new people I tend to prefer Aran weight, um, I know a lot of people go for DK, but I always think it's a little easier if the yarn and the hook are a little chunkier, you don't feel quite so fiddly. So I am starting you off on this yarn, um, this is Cascade Cantata, um, and this will be a really nice one to start off because it's not applied yarn, it's a blown yarn. Um, so you see this is the one i'm using this is james c brett it aztec aaron so you see that's like twisted mm -hmm. and that's not yep. that's more like a cord um it's basically like a tube that's been stuffed with cotton oh yeah no maybe you explain this actually yeah. yeah so for a beginner i feel like that's going to be easier because you're less likely to split the yarn so there is your yarn there's my yarn 
and because it's Aaron, I could have gone for a five, but actually this one seemed to look better with a 4.5 mil hook. Okay. You're left-handed. Yes, but I feel like this is going to make more sense than that is. So I'll have to give it a go and see. <laughs> You're just deliberately making things awkward. Now. You're just going to really, really test me out today, aren't you? Yes. So you're left-handed, but you're going to learn right-handed. Well, yeah. Well, it's the same thing with um, when I with when I learn guitar. All all of everything in my guitar playing that's precise is done with my right hand. I fret with my right. Um, so I, <laughs> I feel like power comes from left and control comes from right. Okay. This is where you change your mind halfway through, and I'm going to need to reteach it to you all on the left. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> all right. So. Um, <coughs> Yeah, I've also got a 4.5. Like I said, I've got James C. Brett in Aztec Aaron. Um, it's all wibbly because this is my this is my teaching yarn. I tend to just... This is the one I always take along if I'm teaching. So the number of times I've kind of made stuff on this and pulled back and made it and pulled back. So it's, a, it's kind of a spaghetti yarn at the minute. Right, you ready? Yes. Okay, so... Teach me something. <laughs> um, we have to start by making a slip knot. So your end is there. Oh, no. You've got, oh no, that's your yeah. middle end. Yeah, yeah. You might want to tuck that in so we don't get that confused. Okay, right. So the way I always teach this one is if you get your left hand and make like a like a finger gun out of it okay. and hold that. Okay, sure. Should I put, pop this down on the desk? Yeah, yeah, you might want okay. to pop it down. Like un okay, unwind so. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So finger gun with the bottom coming towards your little finger. Yeah, so... Yeah, okay, hold it okay, Yep. And then wrap it so that you end up with a cross on the backs of your fingers. Okay, so. Yep, yep. And then pull it towards your knuckles. Oh. Like that. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So then hold it so that you can see your. Yep. Yep. So palm down so you can oh. see the backs of your fingers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I tend to tuck that under my little finger to keep it. There you go. And then you're going to get your hook. You're only going to deal with these top legs. You're going to go under the first one and over the second one. Under the first, over the second? Yeah, and then pull it. Yeah, pull. Until you've got, like, yeah, twist it in. And then just snap your fingers out. Um, uh, yeah, you want to wiggle your fingers out. And then pull both of those ends. Pull both of those ends, so I've got a knot. There you go, you've got a knot. Now, if you pull on this end, it's going to get shorter. Shorter and shorter. If you pull on until... that end, it gets longer. No. If you pull on the other end, it should get longer as well. It does. Good. Then you've done your slip knot. Okay. Okay. Hard, <laughs> but okay, I guess I don't really want it to go that way anyway. Um, yeah, you don't want it too tight. Um, and actually, this is going to be some really good advice for like the whole of this bit. The tighter you make it, the more you will absolutely hate yourself in twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like, you want a good, like, a good level of movement, so that it's quite nice and slidey up and down Slide. your hook. Like, yeah there we go all right so you're doing it right uh, handed so um what i would do i'm not going to teach you the really fiddly tension hold because it can get really tricky grab it with those three fingers yep. and then hook it over the top uh, yes like that okay. and then what i would do is with your thumb and your middle finger hold that tail end yes so that you can keep it nice and taut okay all right so we're going to have to start off by doing a chain so you're going to get your hook and you're going to go under and then pull it through. Oh, I've not made that big enough, have I? Mm. Oh, there you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And do the same again. Under and pull it through. Um, oh, oh. So you might want to tighten that loop a little bit. There you go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So under the arm. Oh, you'd went yeah. over then. Oh. oh. Yeah. Towards you and under. Yes. The, the... Okay. Yeah. And then pull it through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so grab. And then twist the hook towards yourself. No. Yes. And pull it through. Yes, there you go. Cool. And just keep doing that. Okay. So yep. and uh, pull through. If you twist the hook towards the, the tip of the teardrop shape that you make with the the yarn. So, like, if you twist the hook towards the bottom, it pulls through slightly easier because ah. you're basically pulling yourself a space open. 
I think what I'm doing is I'm I'm tightening it too much before I start the next one. Yeah. So it feels like you're doing it really messy if it's loose, but actually, like the tighter it is at the start, the worse it's going to get later. Okay, so pull that through. Oops, you get so often. Yeah, you're getting it. You should end up looking a little bit like that. Like a little bit of a plait. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like what was I can't remember if it's like the Lego movie or something where someone just kinda of looks away for a second, looks back and then they're already done building something. <laughs> I just I, I I just sped ahead a little bit just to give like a, an idea of the the kind of the plaited not that my camera is nearly good enough for you to see that. Oh, um the kind of the plaited look that a chain gives. So uh yeah, I was going to say a little tighter than that. While you're doing that, I'm going to see if my tea is cool enough. Uh, today I am drinking a tea in the gang um, strawberry and champagne flavour. I haven't tried this one yet. Oh, that's quite nice actually. That is very strawberry. I am drinking Tesco's own brand <laughs> summer fruits squash. You are, can confirm. <laughs> yes. Quadruple. Quadruple strength, yes. <laughs> can see that now. Okay, yeah, you are making a little chain. Yeah, we are. Okay, so. I, oh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. pull it to that way. And there you are. Cool. Cool. There we go. Oh, you and might want to loosen that, uh, tighten that. There we go, yeah. You see, you're already using that finger, like, instinctively um to keep that to change the the kind of the tightness of uh so yeah that's um that's really good for kind of controlling how tight you're holding the yarn um the tighter it is the kind of thicker and stiffer the fabric gets if it's like really loose it's generally a bit drapier but yeah i can see that you're instinctively already kind of controlling that with your first finger which is quite good yeah it's um i, I think yeah reminding myself that stuff still needs to happen with this hand because the thing that i pay attention to when i see you crochet is i'm paying attention to you moving this around and twisting it around this and the other i don't pay attention to what's happening here yeah probably because this is the tool yeah so <laughs> the, the this is the thing that does the stuff yeah but you'd be surprised at how much actually goes on in the the, the left hand as well yeah. um i tend to hold my yarn a little bit twistier than you're holding yours but i I don't always teach that right at the start because it's a little it's a little tricky in fact when I first teach especially with the younger kids um I actually teach it I don't even start off them off with a hook I start them off with their fingers mm. so that they can get get used to the idea of hooking and pulling it through with their fingers and then once they've kind of watched themselves do it and what they have to do then they have to copy it with the hook and it gives them a little bit of a better idea about what like where they want the hooky part and what direction they want it facing Okay, so I've got myself a little chain. You do. And I've got myself into a little routine now where I can sort of do this. So put a little bit through, and then that, this is how that's a bit. <laughs> that a bit there. You're picking it um, up quite quickly so far, though. Okay, it's so there we go. Yeah, go down that way. Pull this through. Ooh, no. <clears throat> that one didn't go well. That's quite a neat little chain. I've got to admit. Yeah, that, that's actually quite interesting. It is, it? although you're holding it backwards. Am I? Okay. There's your plait. Nice. See, it does. It does actually look like mine as well, doesn't it? Oh yeah. It's all right. That's quite a neat. I'm a little bit annoyed at how neat that is. Not, I just want to put that close to the camera. Well, so yeah, it'll probably pick up yours better than mine. Uh, maybe not. It's kind of. Oh, there you go. It's quite nice and neat. Look at that. Look at his little chain. I think what also helps as well is that this is quite a neat yarn. Well. well, that's exactly what I was going for. Like I said, the fact that it's a blown yarn rather than applied yarn is helping you out so much here. Um, because, like, if you look at this, this one, it would be so easy to kind of split and get, like, yeah. in the middle in between those plied strands. And um, especially in the next bit, that's more and more likely to happen. I think the, the thing I'm struggling with is um, maintaining tension in my left hand and moving the yarn up 
as I need more of it. I can teach you the trickier way, with it, which is easier to control, I find. Instead of just doing that, I wrap it around my little finger first, and I find that helps me keep it slightly more secure. It feels like it's not going to run away from me as much. That already feels way better. Yeah, Yeah, and then like just hook it over from back to front of your top finger. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Like that. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah. I say I don't always teach that because sometimes it feels really, really fiddly, but sometimes it just feels like you're in much more control. Okay, I'm missing this. Yeah, I do feel like I'm not pressing there though. Yep, so put it under. Okay. Yep, and then if you put the hooks to the bottom. Oh, oh no. Oh. So. From front to back. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's good. I need to grab up there. And then yeah, and then twist up. the hook towards yourself to the bottom. Yeah, there you go. Right, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, so what I need is to make that a little bit bigger just to give myself a bit more room to work with. Okay, so now I can do that. There you go. There we are. I'll oh, see that was quite smooth then as well. Mm. You do get into like a rhythm of it. Yeah, I, I, I can see how, you know, well, when you've said to me that. Um, uh, you know, you've um, you've reached a point where you can just absentmindedly just do something forever. Like even when we're watching anime or something, like we because we we watch subs. <laughs> Let's not get snobby <laughs> about subs over dubs. <laughs> we, 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 naturally, we watch subs, um, and um, it's obviously like half the time when you're when you're working on something that has a sort of like a complicated pattern setting you know, oh up, yeah up, down, up, down, the up, number down. of times when but you're like I want to watch anime and I'm like no I need I need to be looking at my work for this bit and I can't watch anime right now yeah I need it to be something that I can listen along to and uh, I can't quite speak fluent Japanese yet <laughs> like the odd word but um, but yeah it's um, uh, oh this okay so uh, this might be a, offered a chance to get, get some correction in there. Do, do, do I just frog that if I'm gonna? Oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. You could always cause... pull it out. Frogging. He's using the terminology. <laughs> okay, so. So I... yeah, just pop the pop the hooks back in the loop. Okay, right. Because I wasn't sure if I had to um, sort of pull it out once or twice in it's order to, get, to rejoin. Entirely true. Um, but. Uh... To be honest, normally when I'm teaching, I'll teach the chain first. And then, um, like, once the kids or whoever I'm teaching has got the hang of it, they then pull the whole thing back and do another one, like, a neat version. Because, like, especially at the start, it's all, like, really, really gappy and straggly. And then once they've got the hang of it further up, it starts to get nice and neat. So normally, when I move on to the next stitch, I'm like, right, pull it all back. We're going to make a neat chain and then work from that. But actually, yours is quite neat already, so I'm probably just going to move to the next bit straight off with you and I think if you're happy that's quite a nice chain yes if you're happy to move on I'm quite happy to move on yeah. I'm just going to check those last few look a little on the tight side you can degrade me <laughs> <coughs> oh you've done a I think you've got one twisted one that might have been why you were on about earlier yeah can I just yeah. thank you I'm just going to put those two back in Okay, there you go. Right. So, next one. Um, so, I'm going to teach you using UK terms. Because the UK terms and the US terms are different. So, though, those are chain stitches. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can count them just by counting the number of kind of plat bits um, that you've got. So, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so how many do you have? I'm actually going to let you count because that will determine how many stitches you need on the next row. Ooh, I, I can see I've messed it up somewhere else as well. I can see that in the middle there, yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit, but it won't it won't affect the next row. <laughs> and ultimately, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay. okay, so I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 stitches. You've got 19 stitches. Okay, that does mean on the next row, you're going to have 18. Okay. Um, because, <coughs> right, what we do here, this one is a double crochet. So this is a UK term double crochet. 
So you can see that first kind of V, so not the one on the hook, mm -hmm. see the first one. We're going to skip the first one because if I put my hook back in there, I'm just going to undo this bit okay. that I've just done. So I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to stick my hook in the left, like through to the left side of that V. Okay, so over there, so. Um, so ignore the first one. Ignore the first one, so I'm, I'm kind of. So you want to tighten that bump a little bit? Okay, I'm, I'm kind of there, but okay. so, yeah. So uh, not the first one, so we're going through there. I think so. Let me see from this angle. Uh, yeah, I think that is right. Okay. So then you're going to do a similar kind of movement uh, to the chain where you're going to go around and behind. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to pull it through that one. Not both of them, just one. Right, and then the American way you put it through both, haven't you? Uh, no, it's the same thing. They just call it a different, they just give it a different name. Okay, cool. That's the okay. first half of the stitch. Yeah. And then you're going to do the same thing again. Wrap it. Wrap it around. Bring and then it pull it through both of them. Yep. Oops. There you go. Right. That is a double crochet stitch. Nice. So, then... To go into the next one you can see there that's the one i've just done because you can see that little loop coming out of that hole okay so i'm gonna go into the next one not that one the next one oh, so sorry I, I, was, I was trying to sort of set myself up can you repeat that yeah um i tell you what i tend to use i'm gonna get one of my smaller hooks and use it as a pointy stick so um you can see that you've already gone into that one because hang on mm. No, 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 sorry, it's just that uh, that first leg's a little tighter than the rest of it. Okay. Okay, so you can see that you've already gone into there, mm -hmm. so you're not going to go in there. You are going to go into there. Okay, right. Okay, Next. so I'm going to bring this bad boy around into, into there. Yes. Okay, and then hook, um, hook like that. Bring it around to the back. Oops, I can't. It's 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 sliding around. Yeah, it's, it is a bit. Yeah. So what I would do is, like when you're holding it, use your thumb and middle finger to hold that in place. Okay, so yeah, bring it round and then bring it around town. <laughs> go through yes. there. Okay, and then once again, bring Should it pick that through. Up so quickly. <laughs> and. Oh, I think it might have made it a bit too tight going through there. Yeah, no, I think you're good. Yeah. yeah, just hold that. You can always loosen that first one off if you just... Um, there we are. Oh. oh, it's all right. I think it's still holding just... It can be saved. It can be saved. I actually gave you the grippier hooks as well. Um, I don't. I didn't know whether you were going to say why do you get the good hooks and I don't. These are incredibly slippy. Right. So I gave you the slightly less slippy ones. <laughs> All right. So, oh, you're twisted a little now. Oh yeah, no, I am as well. So yeah. Put that back to that. Yes. So. So you want to be holding it really like this because you're going to be working back along the chain you've just made so you're going to be going from right to left along that chain okay. and i will admit that first bit does look like a bit of a knot okay so just, just make sure am i am i actually holding it the right way around should this be at the back or the front that you want hang on i think we've got our <clears throat> so you want to be holding it so that your knotty bit is in your right and then you're working like in the left direction right gotcha. and i would hold it with those two so that when you go in you can kind of hold it tight okay so your next i see that that's i think that's the main thing i'm struggling with it's it, well one like, like i said before it's feeding in a uh, yarn with this hand but then getting the right grip but yeah. without stopping myself from being able it's, to move it's so many fingers involved aren't there yeah 
All right, so the next one, you can see that's where you've just come from. Yep, so I'm going to pop through here. Yes. Uh, this is why I said earlier that if you do it really tight, you'll hate yourself. <laughs> yes. I'm surprised at how quickly you've picked that up, though. I only showed you one for the second one. You were like, right, so I'll hook it here, pull through one. <laughs> yep, so the first one, yep, I'm going to hook around here. So I would, I've, yeah, I would, I've, I've lost myself again. I would hold that with your left. Hold that with my left. Yeah. Um, okay, so right, uh, underneath the other. Underneath like that. So put put your hook the other way. Hook the hook the other way. The left. No. <laughs> that way. <laughs> okay, okay, right. So do that and that's gonna go through one. Yeah. Yeah, you, you keep going the wrong way with your hook. You go towards you. Okay, there you go. Yeah. And then that goes through too. Lovely. There we are. So yeah, just make sure you're always bringing the hook towards yourself and underneath. Always towards. Okay. Always towards. Always towards. Okay. Because there are specific stitches where you would do it the other way. So like I said, the first few kind of just look like a knot in your chain and it looks like you've gone completely wrong but then as you go across it'll start going a bit it'll basically just make it look like you've thickened your chain and it will start to curl so if it starts to kind of curl back on you don't panic that is right <laughs> in fact it is specifically used to make octopus tentacles sometimes because it forms a spiral And then I'll do quickly a few and then you can see what it should look like after a few more. I can tell I've used this yarn quite a few times because the, the ply is starting to loosen a little. <laughs> I'm starting to get a lot of tension through here. I've had to unloose them a bit. Yeah. So it should start to look like that. If you put it just like I said, start to. <laughs> so there you go. The key bit here is you can see you've got V's along the top. Mm -hmm. So if you see there, oh, yeah. you've got V's. Those are the really important bit for your next row. This is a V, so. I'm going to quickly finish mine because I made a longer chain than you did. Okay. Yep, so it's yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And that is a double crochet stitch. Good old blighty kind. <laughs> okay, so that, that goes to the. Okay, so now I'm at the uh, the looser one, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. that was quite close to the start of yours, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit annoyed at how quickly you're picking this up. <laughs> like I feel like. <laughs> I feel like you should have struggled a little. It would have made me feel better. You know, I surprise myself sometimes with like how quickly I just pick up some stuff. Like I don't want to be mad that you're picking it up because clearly that means I'm an excellent teacher. This is where you say yes, yes, of course. Is it? Sorry. <laughs> I, I missed my cue. I didn't rehearse that line. Um. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm just go through here. Hook towards. Hook towards. This one did. Okay, I, I did it two different ways there. <laughs> <laughs> you did it the same way each time. No, I did. I, I did sort of. Uh, no, no, no. You just undid it and repeated it, <laughs> reversing it and then doing it again doesn't count as doing it a different way. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm sorry, have I messed up your tension now? <laughs> God. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> See, now you know how it feels. <laughs> so, uh, for any non crocheters there, what he's referring to there is if I'm doing something and he just starts talking to me and I go 11, 12, 30, and he's like, okay, I'll come back in a minute. <laughs> You're clearly busy. <laughs> yeah, she's counting stitches. When she does that. Um, Which I'm notorious for not doing religiously. Um, but there are some where I definitely need to count. Like, especially if it's like a lacy pattern. And the count really, really matters. And it's not necessarily a stitch that I'm familiar with. Um, I'm at the point now with most projects where if I've gone wrong, like, I can see it. I don't need to count to know I've gone wrong. I can see it. But occasionally if I'm starting a new uh, like a textured pattern or a lace work pattern and I just need to kind of keep an eye on the first row or so <laughs> and then you come in and I'm like 12, 13 Are we getting there? We are Yeah, it, maintaining that tension in my left hand is really difficult It is, yeah Because without that tension I can't hook it around properly when I first learned I wasn't holding it in the like the I say the right way there isn't really a right way um but I wasn't holding it the way that I've just taught you with the wrap around the little finger and everything I can't even remember how I first started holding it and then um I saw some advice in a book on how to how to have the tension and I almost had to relearn how to do it because it was so fiddly to control with the fingers of my left hand and I hadn't been doing it that way that it I basically had to relearn for like a day or so just until I got used to it. No, I've got a little bit of that. I think it looks right. Yeah. It, it feels like it's like spreading apart there. No, because it, it did feel like I just kind of flipped it up. Yeah. No, you no, you're doing really well actually. <coughs> And you're getting really good at figuring out where your next stitch is going as well. Mm. All right. <laughs> you do get to a point where you can just do that, like without looking, and you just kind of twiddle your fingers, and it's there. Yeah, the, 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 that that feels like the kind of thing that you, know, I, you could pick up, like sort of. Well, you, you could figure out for yourself, and then you'd be able to. Yeah. Um, my mum can do that with um, knots in cotton, um, and I to this day I have never figured out how she does it. It's like some kind of witchcraft. She just gets the end of the cotton, just kind of like rubs her fingers together, and like boom, there's a knot like right at the end. And like um, any cross stitchers or embroiderers will know that like you know you tie you tie the knot and you want to get it as close to the end as possible, so you've not got the little kind of taily bits. And I just I just don't understand. It's it's witchcraft. She, she just does that and then boom not and I've been trying to work this out for, like, for my whole life and I just don't know how she does it it's like people who can uh, tie a cherry stem in their mouth Yeah. Um, like I, I, I'm sure there's a technique for it um, yeah. but I don't know it <laughs> as far as I'm concerned it just looks like she's just rubbing her thumb and forefinger together and there's a knot and I just, I just don't know how you do it <laughs> I've tried. I've tried so many times where I'm just wondering whether you just rub your fingers hard enough and it, it happens, but it doesn't seem to me. Yeah, just make sure you're holding this to the that side. Of course, yeah, because that, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's my done side. Yeah, have you just gone back into that? Uh, oh, no, no. no you're not. It was just Twitter, there was a twist in it which looked like a knot. <laughs> Getting there. I said, I'm impressed with not only how quickly you've picked it up, but also how quickly you've managed to figure out where you're jamming the hook in next. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Normally I spend like ages pointing at the next stitch. Like they they get the hang of the the actual 
like pulling through and how many loops and things but the bit that takes people the longest usually is figuring out where where they're sticking their hook in next mm-hmm. one of the best um one of the best guides i've ever seen on um kind of reading crochet stitches and like anatomy of crochet was actually in the sophie's universe pattern book um there was like at the start of the book there was like a really really good section just on what each part of a stitch is called and um if you've gone in here then that's this stitch and like it was it was the most helpful thing (laughs) um because i mean i had you're right let me uh, see if i can diagnose yeah you could (laughs) oh no you did you've done yourself a little chain there (laughs) i think it's um uh the, the the difficulty i'm finding now is thank you um the difficulty i'm finding now is um i I've, i'm figuring out tension in my left hand just about but it's i guess maintaining an orientation for my, uh, the project of my right hand but also it's um the uh, it's sort of shrinking around the hook just as i'm about to pull it through yeah so now the hole i need to pull the hook through is too small it's too small to yeah. Pull the, yeah if i might make a suggestion with tension you might find it easier like that oh no 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 just yeah. i wonder if i might there you go like that exactly like that okay let's give it a go it's quite nice this tea actually So you're already hooked around there. Yeah, I'm already hooked around there, so now I can pull this through. Like no, that. as in you're hooked along there. Huh? Yes. What do, what do you mean? So that is twisted. So that's the bottom. Mm-hmm. So you, ah, you've hooked into the wrong. You've hooked into the bottom. Can you see there? Instead of going in there, you went in there. Oh, uh, okay. So that was right there you go. okay that, that's why it didn't look right and cool Thanks. yeah so yeah you're always going along the top <clears throat> so let's just pull this you're nearly at the end of the first row as well you'll be glad to know that actually it gets easier as you the first few the first row is always the most fiddly <laughs> yeah see that that thing it's it's that thing that's happening it's uh the um like I, i'm getting so it looks like there's enough space for it there but as i pull it through uh, it doesn't feel it, it, it see how it shrinks around it yeah it's making it difficult to i think you're actually bringing around <coughs> more yarn than you're intending so you're doing that and then twisting and you're almost catching that as well the back of it as you're trying to pull through which might be why it feels like it's shrinking because you're you're catching that bit with the hook and almost Kind of trying to pull it through double mm-hmm. so yeah just be careful that you're not twisting your hook too far around there you go how smooth was that that was much easier yeah okay right so we're getting there people we are <laughs> um okay so we are going to go into here So we go this one here. Yeah, that looks smoother yeah. now. Yeah, Smooth. yeah. Okay, cool. And that goes to there, and that goes twice. There we go. That was yeah, that does easier. look smoother now. That, was that must have been what you were doing, yeah. catching the other loop. Okay, right, so I've just got one more to do then. Ooh. 
and then you can count and see how well you did on your <laughs> so you should have had it what was it 18 something like that <laughs> <laughs> there or thereabouts to be fair it's not like it's gonna hugely matter right now anyway what are you saying my product doesn't matter no i'm saying it's a <laughs> practice Yeah, that end one can be a little fiddly because of the, the initial knot. Yeah, it, it, yeah, if you pull the knot away. Yeah, there you go. There we go. And, and then, then cut, cut through. And again, pull the knot away. Hey. Uh, hey! All right, I will count your stitches. This is moment of truth time now. Mm. Okay. You gotta find if I dropped a stitch, or if I uh, miscounted it in the first what place. What have you done there? You tell me, Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I did think you might have skipped one or two. Oh. <laughs> You've, but I said actually, it's really, really impressive. The only bit that's majorly weird is that bit. Yeah, like, I can see it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, honestly, that's the biggest thing. I think you have skipped one there. Can you see how that's so much longer than the rest? Yeah, yeah. I've got a feeling you've skipped one there. But for a first go, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> like, like annoyingly good. Um, all right ready for your second row uh yeah okay so for the second row it does get easier after this because the stitches are much easier to see so the first thing we have to do is you have to kind of create your step up so what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work so that we're back on the far right side because you always work from right to left so you're going to turn it so that it's the other way. Okay, so if I were um, if I were left-handed, you like, left to right. Left to right. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I, I am left-handed. Oh, so, <laughs> if you're left-handed. If, 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 if I did what I'm supposed to. Do. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to hold it so that it's um, you, you need your kind of your original tail to be on the bottom and your loop to be on the top. Okay, so. And it's pointing to the left. Uh, so yes, is that what I've got? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. That works for me. So that works. Don't pull that through. Yeah, no, don't. <laughs> nearly lost your loop there. There we go. I okay. nearly riveted. Okay. So, the first thing we have to do is we have to kind of get up to the height of our stitches. So I'm just going to do one chain. Because can you see there, I've kind of like stepped up. Okay. Um, how do I do this ch uh, chain again? And so you're going to, with, without going into any loops, you're just going to, you've, you know... There you go. It was tied around your tail. Yeah. So you're just gonna hook around, hook around, and pull through. Pull through. Okay. There you go. You've got one chain. Yeah, cool. So you want to be holding it now, that way. Okay. So those V's that you made on the top are now where you're gonna put your hook in. So again, first thing you're gonna ignore the first one because that's the chain you've just done. You're gonna go under both parts of that V. You're going to count that as one stitch, so you're going to turn it so that your V's are pointing towards you. Uh, oh yeah, my V's are pointing yeah, towards me. So and I'm going to go through there. But both legs of it, you're going to go under both of them. Nope, it's wrong through the middle. Oh. Go to the bottom. Oh, oh, right. Because you said turn it towards me, so I was... Okay, yeah. right, so I'm going and uh, through... Just both of those V legs. There we are. Yep. Yes, exactly. And you're just going to do the same thing, but you're going to treat the V like it's one loop. So wrap, pull through the first one. Wrap, pull through both. Okay, so. Let me try. So wrap. Yeah, just pull under the V. Pull through the first one. Yeah, and then. And then wrap and pull through both. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, 
I'm definitely getting caught on things as I'm going through it. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's difficult to get her to sort of to not do that. So you're gonna keep going. So under the next V, mm. under both legs of it. Yeah, I forgot where the top was. Mm, yeah. So under and there. Perfect. Cool. So that is a one. Two. There you go. Cool. And you're going to go all the way along and do the same on all those. So I think you had, what was it, 15? Let's see if you can get 15 to the end. <laughs> well, <laughs> 15 give or take. <laughs> yeah, give or take. What I would do is when you get to that weird teeny tiny knot one, I would just skip over that completely. Just do the really defined Vs that you can see. Okie dokie. And uh, I would ignore the rest. start again but yeah so there is <clears throat> yeah because like it, it's it's weird I, I imagine there are a lot of instances where it probably makes a lot more sense to pick up halfway through um uh pick up halfway through a stitch but like i, I because i'm still very much a beginner i would much prefer to um you know Sort of restart. I mean, even I switch. don't like starting, uh, stopping mid stitch. Um, if I can help it, I will always at least finish the stitch I'm doing. Um, the only time I would ever drop it mid stitch is like, you know, in an emergency or something. I mean, most of the time I finish the row. <laughs> most of the time you're like, can you come and help me? Like, yeah, in a sec, in a sec, I'll finish this bit. <laughs> but hopefully now you can appreciate why I make you wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what might not be helping is you've got this wrapped around your finger twice so that's going to tighten the attention I've, I've done that deliberately okay. because i've had I, when i had it um uh, wrapped around just once it was flailing all over the place and i was losing my tension here Fair play. that's why i do the little finger wrap as well uh, oh that, that doesn't that's not oh i think you've got yourself caught hang on uh, is it hmm. yeah you've brought part of the stitch through. I think that was that other loop that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, I've just undone that stitch. So you've done cool. two good ones. Two. Great. <laughs> I mean, this is just two on row two. You've done row one. Yes, no, I have. Yeah, so um, let's do that. You see that thing? I can't get the tension through. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's that's... It might help if you move this down your finger, and that, that was nice, like that. that. Sorry. That was... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it helps if you bring it from behind and in front rather than the way you've done it. Yes, like that. Yes. Um, so there isn't really a right way, but I find this easier to control. Yeah, now I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Hang on, that's no, no, fine. Go through one, back up, and through two. Like the the actual sort of in terms of what you're doing on paper is very very simple. It's it's the dexterity that comes with it. Yes, absolutely. Um, Which is why. I hope you can appreciate now why I went for a slightly thicker yarn and thicker hook. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't expect you to, you know, start me off on expert mode. That's. Uh... <laughs> I'm not that horrible. <laughs> well, given that you're a school teacher, I would hope that you would 
<laughs> I thought you were going with, given that you're a school teacher, clearly you do like being horrible. <laughs> no, <laughs> no yeah, given you're a school teacher, I, I'm, I'm glad that you sort of, you know, uh, set uh, sort of uh, skill expectations appropriately. Professional. Professional, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I am a professional tutor as well, a professional crochet teacher, so... You are, yes. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that my techniques work. <laughs> I'm getting there. Good. Like you said, the actual like the actual motion isn't that difficult, but it's just getting all your fingers doing what you need them to do to make yeah. it successful. And I can I I can see um sort of the problems that someone might have when using like if you were making a really yay uh, lacy, lacy <laughs> um sort of project like if you were making a doily yeah for example because you crochet doilies don't you? yeah well yeah. I've done like yeah. So if you're using like a really really fine yarn and a very small needle, trying to do what, exactly what I'm doing right now, which is to sort of you sort of push the needle through this tiny gap. Hook. Um, hook. <laughs> <laughs> Your hook. I hook. Yeah, this by the way is um, I tend to use this as a coaster for my yarn ball. This is the oh wisp weave doily. Um, by Julia Hart or Draguna. Um, I'm not sure which one she uses as her designer name, um, but I adore her patterns. She's got the most beautiful kind of intricate lacework designs um, and they're just, just stunning. I'm having trouble with this one. Uh, I'll just pop it back. I'm mm. trying to push through here, um, um, but... Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, try to push through here. When I get through to the other side, it looks like I'm actually under a couple of bits there. Oh, see? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that what are you doing? You're the teacher. I thought there was a red bit there. Uh, so, you are going in there. Can you see that hole that you've been slightly bigger? No, no, no. I, I'm still trying to go through there, but it's, it's still taking me through to... Oh, it's just because it's really tight there. Yeah. So it might be worth going through one at a time. So one leg. Two legs. Yeah, cool. So yeah, it's sometimes worth going through one at a time, but that one is a little a little right. tighter. Um, I have my tension is off. <clears throat> I'm very tempted while you're doing that to see if I can continue on the little monkey. The little monkey. The little monkey. Because I haven't really done anything on him um, since uh, since I last showed him off. But how cute is he? Just look at his little face. He's so cute. That is a very adorable monkey. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very tempted. Oh, where's my formal hat gone? Oh, it's oh no, it's in the bag with the portal square. Maybe not. We already know what it looks like. We can maybe. No, I know, but it's more that it's buried under there. Oh. Uh, maybe I'll sew his legs on them because that doesn't need a hook. Yeah, but I've had to do the same thing again. Just like push through one at a time. Yeah, sometimes it does. Oh, actually, do I need a hook for that? No, I don't think I do actually. I think those are finished. Right, now that's the long one, so I'm going to skip that. No, no, don't skip the long one. Um, oh. I would skip the really tiny one next to the long one that looks like a, just a little knot. Right. But I have already passed just it before. Oh, I thought you meant that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no don't skip oh, 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 that. That's normal, okay. <laughs> it's interesting how, like, with some of this stuff, 
Like, I've not even made a mistake in the, uh, sort of, the tech, the, well, I've not even made a mistake with uh, the stitch, but I've still done it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Crochet's magic like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can be absolutely convinced you've been doing it right the whole time and still have a mistake. It's like it, you know, if someone plays a game that their child has invented. Like, <laughs> yeah, and you followed them to the letter and somehow still done it wrong. Yeah, somehow you still <laughs> lose. Yeah, good old Calvin Ball. You're right. You can always just undo that last loop. There you go. Oh, yeah, no, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, cool. It's nice to know that the solution sometimes is actually quite easy as long as, as long as, uh, I suppose it's like having confidence in there and doing anything. It's, um, uh, it's like, um, whenever I have to fix someone's computer, for example, um, it's not even just a matter of, oh yeah, because I'm an IT person, I know what the problem is. It's just I have the confidence to seek an answer and try a solution. Yeah, but, and you've got a pretty good idea that if you search, like, you know where to look yeah. for the answer. Yeah, so I, I know where to look for an answer. I know what looks like the right, uh, you know, what, what looks like it'll be the right solution. I know, you know, or at, le at the very least, if I'm if I'm going to try and do something, I know what is happening in the background enough that I can be confident that if it goes wrong, okay, well, I can still fix it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if I had to fix my own car, for example, like, you know, I would struggle because, okay, fine, you know, I, I might have read up about this part and how to change a thing about it, but I don't necessarily know what could, what else could go wrong. Yeah. But, you know, uh, fixing something that's gone wrong on someone's computer, that's, you know, it's familiar territory. Yeah. I suppose that, that the, the same principles apply here. Yeah, knowing stitch anatomy is really, uh, really good for for figuring out how to fix anything that's gone wrong if you know like what the stitch should look like and okay so i, th I think i might have reached the small stitch oh the, the little knotty one yeah so um yes so so i'm going through here um or... i would if oh i would on that one right i'm gonna push you through on this one just because that one's such a There we go. Thank you. But you're nearly done on your second row. I'm nearly done on my... Why am I holding it like a pen? <laughs> <laughs> you can. There are some people that hold their hooks. Um, it's kind of um, pen hold or knife hold. Um... <laughs> yeah, not too bad. How are you? Um, he is learning to crochet. It's... Uh... It's an, it's going annoying me well. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so some people hold, like, knife hold um, the way I do it, and then there are some people that hold it um, in the same way that you would kind of hold a pen. Um, that feels wrong to me. <laughs> I mean, you know, however you want to hold it is the right way, but personally, I'm a, I'm a knife holder. Well, it's the same thing. Like if you were, you know, using a computer, going back to computers, um, <laughs> it's, computer, it's what like, it's what you know, isn't it? It's what I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like you, um, you use a mouse with your left hand. Like uh, even though I'm left-handed, I don't do that because no. that, because that's weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they in, interact with the computer however you like. Um, but. Um, but yeah, it, but it, it is strange to think about doing that. Similarly, when I play guitar, when I first, um, when I first started learning how to play guitar, 
um, it was my friend's uh, over on my friend Tom's house he has a um, or his, his dad had I can't remember if it was his or his dad's but anyway one of them had a Fender Stratocaster um, and he brought it out um, started playing and we were just sort of goofing about I was trying to play right handed and I uh, I was really really struggling with it um, it just, none of it made any sense like I, it felt like um, it always felt like there was a bubble around my right hand going onto the guitar and around my hands, my left hand trying to fret. Um, but then uh, as soon as I flipped the guitar upside down and played that way, I could pick up the songs I was learning. I was learning Enter Sandman or something. And it was easier to learn the Enter Sandman upside down on a right-handed, right-handed guitar flipped lefty than it was to try and learn it right-handed. And yeah, you know, sometimes it is just that obvious. Yeah, that, you know, you just have to go that way. And I imagine it's the same thing where you, have, you know, learn to crochet, um, sort of, uh, with uh, one, with your left or right hand. And I do, um, I do wonder as well whether I should kind of try and learn with the other hold. You know, as a as a teacher, um, you know, should I be trying to offer students like a difference in? the hold whether it's knife hold or um or pen hold um but i don't know i guess if you're only taught one way and i've i've never come across somebody who struggles so severely that they haven't been able to do it at all um so i don't know i mean i've taught left-handed as well um and i've managed that with actually surprising success um <laughs> And I've not just sat there and said, right, mirror this either. I have actually kind of taken it with my left hand and done it as they would want to do it. Um, although you'd be surprised actually how many people left-handed still use the, the hook in their right hand. Um, I've taught several now who are left-handed and I've tried to teach them left-handed and then they've instinctively gone about it in a right-handed way. Mm. And it's it's quite surprising. All right, be prepared to praise me. I'm near the end. <laughs> All your balls wobbled on the floor. I know, my balls dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it family friendly here. <laughs> through this last bit I'm sorry this this is a Christian Twitch stream um. <laughs> okay done because it looks wrong <laughs> does it <laughs> let's have a oh you've oh you've got a little ridge there oh, but actually I'm not sure how you've got a ridge there <laughs> what have you done there? I've discovered a new stitch. On oh, no, a don't, I've got a student that manages to do that like every time before when I was teaching her to crochet. She managed to like invent new stitches every time. I'd be like, I genuinely don't understand what you've done, and she'd be like, mm. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, I think I think what's happened is that just because you've elongated that, I think it's just kind of given you a little, weird little corner. Yeah, the like tension's all over the place. You can you can feel sort of like around here is half decent, around here it's really tight, mm. and then yeah. But actually, for a first attempt, that is pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's a bit wibbly wobbly, but yeah. it's uh, um, it'll do the job. Hmm. All right. Mm, what do you want to do next? Do you want to carry on with that, or do you want to learn another stitch? Uh, there's another stitch. Learn another stitch. Oh, okay, here we go. Right, so uh, let me just finish this particular stitch I was doing on Mr. Monkey. He's, he's nearly got a head sewn on. Um, if I'm going to stop here, that would annoy me. There we go. Okay. I'm multitasking on this stream. <laughs> okay, let's, uh... Oh, I'm not finished on my row. I'm surprised Penny hasn't go up. I know, I was just thinking that. I'm really surprised that she's not... She's probably asleep downstairs. 
but no, I'm surprised that she's not come up. She does really like her living room bed, though. She does, and I also put on a dressing gown earlier as well, so oh, I think she, yeah. she's less inclined to... She'll be cosy and warm. I think she's nice and warm. Oh, now I feel like I want to call her up so that you guys can see her in a little dressing gown. It's so yeah. cute. And it's had its themed as well. It's Halloween themed, so it would be really it fitting. Yeah, it's, it's spider. It's spider spider's thing. webs. Mm. Um, and I've got my little pumpkin as well on the shelf. I just... Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to really oh, the, keep along the cinnamon stick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just to really keep with the Halloweeny theme. Right. Um, the next one I'm going to teach you is a treble crochet. Okay. I'm going to teach you a treble. So. A British treble. Yes. Yes. So we're going to do the same thing again, where you're going to flip it, so that you're back at the right. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Now to start a treble. What you want to do is you want to do two chains because treble stitches are taller than doubles. Okay, so uh, yeah, one, three. One, oh, you went the other way. Yeah, there you one, go. One, three. Good. Yeah, because trebles are taller than doubles. Now that this is an American double, isn't it? Um, or is it the other way around? Yeah, this is an American double. Okay. Yeah, so what you've just been doing is a UK double, but it's an American single. Okay, cool. And this is a UK shuffle with an American double. So, what you want to do, so you're going to be going into here, but before you do, you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook once. Oh, Oops, yeah. Anyway, no. So, and then you're going to stick it in. In there. Yes. Right. Then you're going to do, you're going to start off the same way. So you're going to wrap it once and pull through. Wrap it once and pull through. Yep. But now you've got like three loops on your hook instead of two. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to wrap and pull through the first two. Wrap and pull through. Oh, wrap, pull through the first two, wrap, pull through the rest. Got it. And pull through the first two. Wrap, pull through the second two. So can you see there that stitch is much taller? Yeah. 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 No, and you've that's... got your kind of your legs at the bottom and then you've got like a wrap round the middle. Mm -hmm. There you go. So wrap it once. So wrap once. And then stick into the next V. Into the next V. Yeah. Okay. Pull one loop through. Wrap. Wrap. Pull through. Yeah. And then wrap. Pull through. Two. Oops. Wrap, pull through two, and then wrap, pull through two. Wrap, pull through two. So yeah, it's a really similar kind of movement, but you're wrapping before you put your hook into the stitch. Yes. And then you're. Yeah, like just repeating the same movement, but you, you're doing it more times. Interestingly, I'm actually having a much easier time with this one than I was the last one. Um, that is quite interesting. Maybe it's because the stitches are taller, you feel like you've got more room to move. I, I think that's what it is, yeah. I'm, I'm not, it, this isn't anywhere near as fiddly as it was before, so I think... Yeah, but I, I can already see this is this has much less tension. Yeah, actually you can before. see it's looser. Yeah, I, I don't know if it won't show the, uh, the camera or something. Yeah, I, I don't know whether it'll pick it up, but you can see the difference in tension. Yeah, actually, like, yes, that's got quite well. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you, you how can much see how tighter it, those it, bottom it's ones are. It's up because it's tighter. The yeah, bottom, but then the top one looks more like what you'd get on a jumper. Yes, there you go. Okay. Trebles are quite good. Um, they are what are used in making granny squares. Okay. Which would explain the much friendlier appearance, and it's why uh, granny squares are often one of the, um, the kind of the first things that people make. Wrap first. Wrap first. Wrap 
I'll have to reset myself. <laughs> but there's something really satisfying about doing a treble, especially when you get into the rhythm of it. Yeah, there is actually. I I can I can see that. So that first, and then push through. I don't have a like. Why didn't I feel that? I feel, I feel like I, I might actually have done that. But. No, you're not. You're thinking the wrong way again. You keep going round the back and you need to be round the bottom towards you with your hook. Okay, that might be where, why it felt like you were going wrong. Yes. So I do that? Yes. Okay, right. Oh, okay, that, that makes more sense. Does now. that feel better? Yeah. So round the front. And pull through. Yep. Round the round the front, and pull through twice. I've got Fury of the Storm by Dragon Force in my head, and this is <laughs> not a Dragon Force <laughs> activity. activity <you> know. <laughs> That's just the gap between the stitches. So you can see that loop was the longer one. Okay. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, the um, trebles, because they're taller, there's a little bit more of a space between the stitches. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to kind of talk about one of the, the features of the Mawana with those buttonholes. Ah. So I actually deliberately use that as a buttonhole feature. This is... Um, I think that's a double treble. Is this the equivalent of having a word from our sponsor? <laughs> so I think those are a double treble. Um, so they're even taller than trebles. But because there's um, enough of a gap between them, um, I think I even added a chain between there. Up, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just stretched. It's, but yeah, because there's, there's enough of a gap between them, I actually used that as a way to, a way to form a buttonhole. And I've nearly done sewing on Monkey's head. I'm just securing it so he's not got a really wobbly head. Nice. You don't want him to have a wobbly head. No. I was hoping you'd pick it up like nice and quickly, but actually you're picking it up even quicker than I kind of I thought you might. Like, I wasn't expecting you to be really bad at it because you know you do do a lot of dexterity based things with your fingers, um, like you know with your um, with your guitar and things like that. And obviously, mm. computer building kind of takes quite a lot of uh, careful precision. Mm. Um, well, cable management in the computer is actually much easier than this, so... Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, no, you're picking it up really well. We, I was actually joking with you about it last night, wasn't I? I was like, can you imagine if you learn it and, like, get on with it really well and really like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think, yeah. Like, the, the, this far in, I can confirm, I don't think this is an activity I would do, uh, sort of, <laughs> as, as my own thing. <clears throat> But I think it is, uh, it, it is interesting to learn. And it's interesting to sort of just try and, and, and try and do it myself. Does it kind of give you a new appreciation for it? Yes, in the same way that um, making my first focaccia gave me an appreciation for wet dough, but I'll never make it again. <laughs> um, like, you know, focaccia, great. Crochet, great. Not interested in doing it. <laughs> you do it once to say that you've done it and you, you understand the process. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, monkey's got a little head. How are we playing?
go. He's got his little head. Nice. He's so cute. No, I'm gonna wall them there. No, oh, sorry, I just distracted you. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, yeah, I think it might be. I think you just stopped mid stitch. Yeah, so you're just gonna do your last wrap and pull through. Oh yeah, no, because it's a triple. You can do three. Exactly. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, the the naming. Um, I always forget which way around it is. I believe. I kind of uh, one of them bases their name on how many times you pull the yarn through, and one of them bases the name on how many times you wrap the yarn. And I can never remember which way around it is. Um. Let's see if I can do some counting to imagine it. I can count. <laughs> yeah, I think UK bases it on the pull throughs and US bases it on the wraps, I think. And because uh, the thing is, I forget which one counts as a wrap and which one counts as a pull through. Because technically, there's more than two or three on both of those things. Um, but I remember hearing that that was the reason for the name differences, and it was like, oh, okay. So I could kind of appreciate why there's a difference. Because at first, it was just the most annoying thing ever having to like translate in your head. I mean, there are some people that only like UK based patterns, and there are some people that only like US term patterns. Um, I've been doing it long enough that I can basically just switch my brain into US pattern mode um, and then just go from there or um, just switch it into UK pattern mode. The worst is when it doesn't tell you <laughs> whether it's UK or US. I, I remember uh, some time ago you got extremely frustrated with one that <laughs> looks like it should have been a British one but it was an American. The um, thing is, if it's a single crochet anywhere, it's US, and you know it's US because there isn't a British version of that. Um, so anywhere you see SC on a pattern, you're like, right, well, that's a US pattern. Um, but if it only includes doubles and trebles, it could be either. Um, if you see half double, usually it's US because that's their version of our half treble. Um, but it genuinely could be either way. Yeah, the half double should not just be a single. Oh no, no, oh, no! That would be far too logical. <laughs> I'm really tempted while you're doing that to actually kind of call Penny up, so that we can, we can tell Three, her to say hi. Four, five, six. <laughs> 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 I suppose I deserve that. <laughs> Shall I call her up? Yeah, go on. Penny. Penny. She might be asleep. I'm tempted to go and oh, excuse me. Okay, we're gonna take that and bring her up. Penny. Penny I'm Yeah, I'm getting there now. It's interesting how this one, which has more steps involved to it, is actually easier to me than the other one. Maybe it's yeah. Maybe it encourages yeah. encourages a sort of a lighter tension, therefore I'm finding it easier. Here she is. Come here, darling. Can we see her? We can just about see her. Hello, darling. <laughs> I did promise that I would get the dog on at some point, but yeah, you can see her in a lovely little a lovely little dressing gown. <laughs> I know. I'm really surprised you stayed on your own, especially after earlier. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, no. Earlier today, a dog uh, ran over and tried to bite her. Oh, baby. Little uh, uh, bulldog, old bulldog. Yeah. yeah. Not on his lead. Tried to bite her. Owner wasn't all that sympathetic. Mm. I was very upset. <laughs> And so is Penny. She came back and she just wouldn't leave either of us alone. She was so clingy, which is why I'm so surprised that she stayed downstairs on her own all this time. Mm. Um, but you're all right. 
In your own right, don't you? Can you double check in your phone? Yep. No scratches, no teeth marks or anything. But she's beautiful. She's very pretty. Gorgeous. I don't know if you've removed the social media from Oh yeah, I'll very briefly take these off so that um you can see your gorgeous face. Yeah. Hello. You gonna say hello to the camera? There we go. <laughs> gorgeous girl. Is, is oh, that, just there, just there. There's an itchy bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna sit down? She's not used to having sleep, seeing two chairs in here. You gonna sit? Penny, sit. Have you not got? You've not got room, really, have you? <laughs> you've not got room to sit down. Are you gonna sit? Go on, Penny, sit. Oh, there's not room. You're tripping up. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Penny. Good girl. <laughs> it's taken us two and a half years to get sit. <laughs> yeah, no, greyhounds aren't the brightest, so they. She's uh, beautiful, but she's not so bright. Yeah. Hello. Oh, good girl. Come on, get on with it. <laughs> oh, you just well, are, are you waiting for a project for several years from me or something okay that was uncalled for <laughs> don't rush me <laughs> so he's uh he's talking about the portal blanket there guys um i'm gonna you're gonna get it you are gonna get it one day Maybe it will be done in time that you'll be able to lay it over my coffin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> A nice Halloweeny spider web dressing gown. <laughs> I'm just gonna breathe in my face. <coughs> yes, no, she's uh, she had awful, <laughs> awful, awful, awful breath. Um, <laughs> Do they... not roll back on your chair. She's right behind you. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that that tends to be the thing with greyhounds. Though greyhounds just have notoriously bad dental hygiene. Um, it doesn't matter how much we brush our teeth; it's just bad. Mm. Um, brush her teeth. And, and anybody that's been. Uh, in front of the business end of her face can confirm. <laughs> yes, no, it's not great. But she's very pretty to try and make up for it. Just don't open your mouth. <laughs> or smell her. I'll tell you what, you're doing really quickly with those travels. Oh, you've not wrapped first there. Oh, no, I haven't. No. <laughs> I'm not heeding my master's advice. <laughs> I didn't say anything, you corrected yourself. <laughs> I didn't say a word. Um, I don't know, I'm actually going to correct this a little bit because. Um, yeah. We've got multiple things achieved during this podcast. You've learned to crochet and I've given little little monkey his head and body Come on. Oh, the hiccups now. yeah no you're doing really well with this like I said I'm a little bit annoyed like, I didn't want you to struggle but I wanted I don't know I didn't no I, I didn't want you to struggle but you've picked this up alarmingly quickly I think that just comes from, I guess, your competitive nature, um, and the fact me competitive, mm. <laughs> and, and, just, and just the fact that like you tend to, um, you tend to struggle with something if you don't uh, sort of 
if you're not good at it the first time you try it and i guess maybe seeing me <laughs> sort of not struggle as much as you might have the first time you did crochet to be fair no i did, I did pick it up really quickly um i remember chaining and kind of stitching chains together went really quickly for me i made a really naff version of a doily on the first night that i tried it basically just out of chains and doubles um but i mean to be fair as well you've watched me do it often enough that there's a chance you might have subconsciously picked up on some of the techniques as well possibly yeah like, you know you've you've seen enough of me crocheting over the years Are you fucking up now? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I'm increasing in tension again somehow. It's amazing how much you can do that subconsciously. Like, if you're stressed, your tension gets tighter. Mm um it's uh it's one of the ways that people say oh you know crochet and knitting it's really relaxing to do and when you start out everybody's like what do you mean this is relaxing this is so kind of you know the concentration required but um if you are stressed or angry then your tension can quite often just automatically tighten a little bit um uh, without you even noticing so it does you kind of have to force yourself to relax just to make sure you don't uh, immediately get really tight look at that there you go yes it's the you same. have done a double there can you see you've you've slipped one double in where was it there yeah in the, right in the middle <laughs> oh, no, yeah there can you see that one it's just kind of it's pulled up to try and match the rest of it but you can see that it's pulled the loop up <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But that that was probably the one before where I said you got to wrap it first. So you've probably done one and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You're doing really well with the stitches. So, yeah, there we go. If you wanted to increase, so if you wanted to make like a corner and do like kind of that a little bit, you would just do two stitches into the same one. Mm hmm. Or if you wanted to decrease, you could kind of like merge those stitches together. But in terms of like just keeping straight rows, done really well. Brilliant. Well, it's half eight. Yes. I think we should probably call it there because we want to go and watch Bake Off, don't we? Yes, I want to watch Bake Off. I want to see. Uh, I want to see who gets chucked out this week. Is what game it... is it this week? Uh, I can't remember actually. Is it chocolate? No. Oh, we already had chocolate. Is no. It desserts. I can't remember, but like we're getting to the point where like, yeah, we know enough about the contestants. I can remember their names now. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can remember you can remember their names, and it's getting juicy, like mm. the the drama. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think we're going to go downstairs and watch last night's Bake Off now. Um, but thank you so much if you've been with us this whole time. Um, it's been uh, it's been really fun. Um, like I say, you've taken it to, taken to it a lot better than. Um, would have normally been expected for somebody who's never done any kind of kind of yarn craft or stitching or mm. anything like that. So you've taken to it really quickly. Um, and I did it on camera as well. You did, which is like really quite brave, actually. Um, you know, especially you know something you've never done before, which I can confirm he's never done it before. Um, this isn't something that we staged like off camera and was like, now you're gonna go on and look amazing. <laughs> yeah, because like I mean, to to anyone who might be a, a yo. Know, for some reason amazed at what they've seen today like how lame <laughs> how lame would it be to, to prepare and say oh wow i'm just a natural at crochet of all things i mean let's like... not say that like crochet is something <laughs> weird you know let's let's not <laughs> let's not start no but it's, it's not like doing backflips on a motorbike or anything <laughs> just natural <laughs> um so yeah thank you so much to anybody who has sat through this entire hour and a half i really really appreciate it um normal kind of podcast service will resume next week with kind of an update on um what i've done on my works in progress and things like that um but for now thank you so much for joining um i hope you have a lovely rest of your evening and i will see you next week bye